take our first ride. <laughs> So I know you guys are probably thinking what the hell happened to your bus and that's what I'm here to tell you. We went out, we explored, we got around, we saw the sights, we did it all and um, we kind of realized that the bus was a little too big for adventuring so we decided to downsize and now we have this gorgeous 2008 Ford Econoline um, that we have converted into an even tinier tiny home on wheels. When we got home, Jeremy jumped right back into the bus, brought her back up to Oregon, and parked her at a family member's house so that when the day finally comes, we can pull her out of storage and move into her. We just don't really want to be like traveling around being nomadic in such a beast. It just like burns gas like crazy and it's just not like economic, eco economically friendly. <laughs> also not designed for the off-roading that we prefer to do in finding like unique and yeah, we like, to, places. we like to like, find those really cool off-grid, off-the-beaten-path sort of spots and we could tell, you know, after a year or something of using her for an adventure mobile, mm -hmm. it just wasn't gonna work. Those poor shocks. So, I'm gonna show you what we've been working on for the last couple of weeks. Altogether, it really only took us like six or seven days of actual work putting it all in. Like, you know, after you build a bus, you learn a lot, so this really was not like a big deal to put together. And we didn't film it because we just didn't feel like it. We are going to be moving out of our cabin and into Washington State, Pacific Northwest area very soon, in a couple of days actually. So it was really important for us to just focus, get this done, and yeah. When you open up our front doors, you see these beautiful wood panels with plants just like bursting out greeting you to say hello hi these were our plants in our house we actually were able to get most of our plants from our cabin into this van alone so it's very lush tropical jungle vibes so come on in MTV Cribs this van is like a culmination of what we learned on the road and what we realized we over invested in what we realized is all we need is a king-size bed and a kitchenette. In the bus, we went with a queen size bed, and baby, we're two six foot tall like human beings that need to spread out at the end of the day, and it just wasn't cutting it. So we literally fit a king size bed in this cargo van, which I've been all over YouTube and I have not seen anything like that. It was just like something that had to happen, and we accommodated for it. We don't have any room for anything else in here. Not an inch to spare not on the an width. Inch. <laughs> <laughs> we built a beautiful kitchen in our bus and we ended up using it like twice, you know, because we did all of our cooking outside. This is basically just like a sandwich and salad prep area. And we also have a thrifted crystal dish that we have as a sink. We have plenty of storage down here. Um, this is like a two gallon gray water tank. This we're using as a drawer that we'll put our silverware in. We also have this little cooktop um, for like whenever we need to boil some water or something. Bitch, what else do you need? This cabinet was really simple to make. You can see how we made our other ones in our bus build series, but it's basically the exact same way. It's just like a shelf with a face on it and then we cut out the holes and added doors. This side will probably be more like kitchen stuff and then over here will probably be like more bedroom stuff. This planter, Jeremy built that in two seconds. No inset lighting, just like the string light. And we went with the ceiling tiles, steering away from the typical wood paneling on the ceilings and walls like every other van conversion that you see on YouTube. We really tried to give it some opulence. We added this um, sunlight, which was a lot of fun, just cutting a hole in the ceiling of your brand new van. <laughs> we didn't want to fuss with like a wired one. A lot of them have like automatic functions with rain sensors and they'll open and close on their own. We just wanted like, you know, something very simple. These plants were in the house. So we're really happy that we're able to bring like all of our plant babies. This sort of 
mossy like trim and these baubles and these this curtain we found all of that in downtown la for like a dollar and i'll show you how our curtain works that and like that we sewed on this really pretty fringe on the end and yeah we have like full privacy in the front and then we have the exact same thing in the back this center console is actually our 12 volt cooler so she has like a cigarette lighter and it turns into a refrigerator it's pretty big i think it's like i don't know how many quarts it is but as you can see it should hold like quite a bit and it also doubles as a freezer and then we just cut this piece of wood as a countertop and it acts as having like some additional counter space. Our floor was totally recycled material from our bus floors. Underneath the bed is just insulation with a rug over the top. We realized you really don't need to put hardwood floors like throughout the entirety of your bus if you have a giant bed right there anyway. It's just like, who cares? For our clothes and stuff, we just have two bins each that fit like perfectly under this area here. We're obsessed, we're excited, and we're gonna literally be living in here for like, I'd say the next six to eight months. We really like being adventurous and living nomadically, but it's really not something that I wanna do for more than like a year max, like max max. Yeah, so. by this time next year we'll be landed for sure. If you know of any beautiful properties that are affordable in the Pacific Northwest area, Washington, Olympic Peninsula, let us know. I'm not trying to live in here for more than a year. The last thing that we need to do to officiate this van is add our 200 watt Renogy solar panel, which brings me to today's sponsor. Thank you, Renogy. We purchased three 160 watt panels, which gave us 480 watts of solar on our bus. Maybe it's just Renogy's Renogy panels that are like superb or something, but yeah. we were just like literally blown away every single day how you can park in the sun and have power. So even when it's cloudy. Yeah, even during cloudy days. In... Mind blown by uh, the efficiency of these panels. So I was very excited and appreciative when you sent me this panel. So thank you very much for that. So yeah, that's all we have to do is install the solar panel and this van is good to go. And thank God, because we have to be out of our cabin in a couple of days. So yeah, let's get started. Here is our 200 watt solar panel from Renogy that we will be installing today. In addition to the solar panel that Renogy provided, they also sent us this Flex 50 portable solar panel and this chargeable battery station so that if we're ever parked in an area that's like a little too shady or we can't really get the van directly underneath the sun, we'll be able to just throw this wherever there's sunlight and get power from another source. So the first thing we're gonna do is put the brackets on the solar panel and then we'll place it up on the roof. Forget how they are. No. These are the two cords that actually come out of the solar panel panel itself already like built in so it's totally plug and play with a positive and a negative cord and then we have these extension cords that are going to run this current um, into the bus down to our battery. Now we got to drill a hole through the ceiling to feed these wires through. 
Before we do that though, we're actually gonna uh, secure the panel to the roof by just screwing it right into the roof. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's perfect. Yep. So you're gonna feed the wires through now? About to, yes. Okay. I'm just taking these wires and feeding them through this hole I created in, created in the side of the cabinet here. And yeah, it just has like this little pocket that I just fed it through and now I'm feeding it behind the countertop. And there we go. So we've determined that the larger prong goes to the uh, male positive wire. So just gonna slide this on here. Just needs to be metal on metal. Just as long as the metal is touching, it will conduct. Really make sure that's nice and tight. Give it a tug. You just insert the metal prong into this plastic housing. Make sure the waterproof mechanism is sealed. Then you just go ahead and repeat on the other side for the black negative cord. All right, so the final step is connecting these positive and negative cords to what's called an Anderson cable outlet that supplies charge to our battery. Ah, this light means everything. The only reason we don't have input right now is because we are in the full dead shade. The sun is going down, but there we go. Oh, there it is. She Ooh. jumped a little bit. This is a Goal Zero 3000 battery that we just had in our bus. It's officially done. How does it feel? <sighs> Surreal. I mean, now we're leaving in two days. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> That's, That's it, all bitches. She wrote for this one. <laughs> That's all she wrote. We hope you enjoyed this little van tour and continue to follow us on this little journey we're about to embark on. And hopefully this inspires you to make a fan of your own. I think anyone is really capable of doing it with a little creativity.